welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, one of the keys to being successful next year on our farm is getting good grid soil samples in the fall so we can make good decisions on our fertility going forward. We're going to talk about grid soil sampling and how easy it is to do. We're also going to discuss fungicide sites of action. There's a lot of talk all over the country and really all around the world about disease resistance to certain fungicides. We want to talk about where we're having those issues, what they are, and how you can switch fungicide sites of action to prevent future problems. Our weed of the week is a little tricky to identify, but we'll give you the clues coming up later in the show. And first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about what is organic matter. So if you're a non-farmer and you say, um, organic matter, isn't that just the stuff that's laying on top of the, the surface of the soil? We want to clear up any confusion on this and let you know, nope, the stuff you see on top of the ground is not organic matter. Well, when you talk about organic matter, we're talking about plant and animal residues that are decayed in the soil. So the plant residue that's laying on top of the ground right now, that is organic material. Once it decays and gets down into the soil, then it can be organic matter, but chances are only about 10% of the residue that's on top of the ground is ever going to become organic matter. Okay, so with organic matter, and the reason why it's so important to farmers, it does a lot of good things. We want to have a fair amount of organic matter in the soil. Ideally, I'd like to see 5% or 6% organic matter in my soil. It basically makes my soil a little more cushiony if I can use that term, kind of like a sponge too, and that it can absorb water and nutrients early in the season or you know at different times of the year, and then release the water and nutrients when your crop needs it. For every 1% of organic matter in soil, a soil has approximately 4% more water holding capacity. It also, for every 1% of organic matter in the soil, will release for free 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen, four to seven pounds of phosphate, and two to three pounds of sulfur for free every year. It's a great deal as that organic organic matter slowly breaks down over a long period of time. Well, organic matter is definitely great for crops and for soil, but it's also great for the little microbes that live in the soil, and that's probably the big thing. It's probably the big reason why all these good things happen, because that's the home for these little microbes, and they're going to just slowly break down some of that organic matter throughout the season, releasing nutrients while they're getting their food for their bodies too. Okay, so you've heard us talk a little about organic matter, and we haven't even talked about all the benefits, and you say, well, boy, that sounds great. Why wouldn't every farmer try to build the organic matter in his soil. Well, here's what it takes to do that. You have to reduce tillage. You have to plant crops with lots of roots. Corn, for example, has five times the root mass of soybeans on average. You also would want to use manure, use some natural products. We use quick roots on our farm, beneficial bacteria and fungi, and maybe use some cover crops. So a lot of these things are practices that many farmers are doing, but not every farmer is doing that. If we want to do conventional tillage, for example, the problem with tillage is it injects so much air into the soil, it burns up organic matter quickly, and organic matter can actually start to be depleted over time instead of built up. Well, organic matter is a great thing in soil, and it does take some effort and some time to get it to build up, but the benefits are certainly there for the soil, for the environment, and for the farmer too. Well, whether you have low organic matter or high organic matter in your soil, you'll probably still be dealing with our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show. What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans will provide tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate and will be built on the Genuity Roundup Ready to Yield trade. See them in action at extendfollowafield.com. We know that the future is liquid. That's how Agroculture Liquid Fertilizer creates the highest quality products on the market. Because we're committed to finding the best raw materials at the best price possible and getting them from us to you in the most sustainable, responsible ways possible. Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers, helping you grow the future. Dirty work pays. That is if your dirty work includes a Soil Max Gold Digger tile plow. Soil Max tile plows feature zero deflection technology 
With the only tile plow factory paired with Ag Leader's IntelliSlope control system, you eliminate the need for grade calculations and lasers. So make your next investment in a SoilMax Gold Digger. Better yield, longer planting and harvest windows, better water management is all yours with SoilMax. Visit SoilMax.com. Working in agriculture over the past three decades, I saw a need for an accurate way to apply dry product to seed. That's where our Changing Times applicators come in. The CT applicator brush sifts powder into small particles resulting in proper distribution. Quantities can be adjusted by the speed of the brush rotation. This allows for even and accurate distribution of product. Application at the time of planting can be used with any seed delivery system and saves farmers time, labor, and money. Remember, CT applicators for the changing times. Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. Fungicide sites of action. This has gotten to be a big topic here over the last few years. Well, just like we've learned with weeds, with insects, where if you continuously use the same thing, eventually there's gonna be resistance building up to that. Yep. We're learning those same lessons in fungicides, and we have learned them over the last couple of decades, that if you use that same family just over and over and over again, that you're gonna have problems. That's why we're talking about this, just being aware that there are products in different families that you may not be aware of, and also there's combination products out there to try and help you fight resistance. Okay, so let's start first with where are we seeing resistance and what is the resistance to? Well, mainly it's the strobel urine chemistry, and it's kind of one of those good and bad things. I applaud BASF. They did a fantastic job with marketing the product headline. There have been strobel urines out like Quadris for years, but BASF really got people aware of the benefits of using a fungicide, both with plant health and with disease control. And all of a sudden, people across the country, instead of asking for a fungicide, farmers are asking for headline. And I thought that was fantastic because yep. now guys are aware that, wow, here's a problem that we weren't solving before and there are solutions to fixing those problems. Yes, but that's great, but it's just single chemistry and it's getting used at seed treatment time, at in furrow time when you're planting, early season, mid season, late season. I mean, it just was getting used all over the place many times on the same farm and that's really difficult and that's where the resistance does start to build up. So frog eye leaf spot, for example, we're seeing this big issue in the south. We're just concerned about a lot of different diseases and so that's why we would encourage you to switch modes of action or sites of action. But the problem is we don't have a lot of options. We have triazoles. We have this newer family, they'll call it the SDHI, even though some of those products have been out for years, but that's where Zemium would come from or Luna or some of these other ones. So there is another site of action that you could use. And then there's the old chlorothalonil or Bravo. So other than that, we don't have a lot of choices. There's a lot of research being done. There are a lot of new products that are coming at some point down the road, but many already fall into one of those categories already. Well, there's certainly a lot of crops or multiple fungicide applications have been used for a long time. I'll cite sugar beets, for example. Most sugar beet farmers in the upper Midwest, they're using three or or four different shots of fungicides throughout the year. The sugar beet co-op generally will tell farmers, look, here's the order we're gonna do it. We'll use this family first, then this family, then this family, and so on, just because they know disease control is critical to raising a successful crop. However, in corn and soybeans, and even in wheat to some degree, a lot of farmers are just making one shot to fungicide If any, out the untreated acre is still the most predominant in corn, in soybeans, and in wheat. So when we talk about, other than, of course, everybody has a seed treatment for the most part, but in terms of the foliar fungicides, there isn't a lot getting done. And so it's a different deal, and, and the big thing yeah, we're talking about resistance, we're talking about using different sites of action, but we don't want you to panic too much. If you're a corn, soybean, or wheat farmer, chances are you have very few problems today 
and most likely you have no problems at all. The biggest issue you have is diseases are still robbing your yield. So let's focus on that. We've got to control diseases. What's the best plan of attack? So number one, I can get control. Number two, I can do it economically. And number three, hopefully I can prevent resistance going forward. Well, I think prevention is really the key. You have to be proactive and be out there ahead of time if you're using a fungicide. So you can't wait until, all right, I've already got 10% yep. or 20% infection on my plant. Hey, it's way too late to do a really good job with a fungicide. You got to be way out in front and don't listen to the people who say, well, this one's a curative fungicide. That is a term that's <laughs> really That's recklessly ridiculous. used. I yes, think. none of them are curative. Let's put it that way right now. And okay, they might have slight curative activity, but by slight, I mean almost nothing. So forget about the curative activity. You cannot scout for diseases. If you're going to scout for diseases, just don't even bother spraying. You're just wasting your money. Okay. By the time you spray, you've already lost a bunch of the yield. You've got to spray early. That's the whole key. And then besides that, okay, when we talk about how do you get the best return on investment, early season, when plants are little, you can use lower rates okay in wheat that's what guys are doing in soybeans we've done that for years in corn I'd suggest that too quit using the full rates early it's just like and a lot of people say oh you can't do that you're gonna have resistance no I'm not I want you to think about this okay if I'm an adult and I'm going to take some medicine if I had a kid who was one-third or one-quarter my size would they give the kid the same dose as me the adult absolutely not and that's all we're talking about here. This is for disease prevention. Okay, that's what the fungicide is for. So when you have a tiny plant, use a smaller dose. All right, the other thing is just to keep in mind what time of year it is as well and where that plant is at. You have to look at critical growth stages for your plants, for whatever crop we're talking about, and then look at which leaves you need to protect. Right, and the reason why is these fungicides are not mobile in the plant, okay? They aren't even mobile inside a leaf. So they will not move down because they move in the xylem and the xylem only transports things up. So if you only spray the top half of a leaf, the bottom half of the leaf can get disease. So having great spray coverage is a real key. So if you want the best return on investment, our suggestion for you is when it's early, use lower rates. When it's later, use higher rates. All the time when you're spraying fungicides, use small droplets. That means spraying with flat fan nozzles, none of that drift reduction stuff. We gotta have flat fan nozzles, small droplets, great spray coverage, maybe a little more water, maybe a little bit more spray pressure. Those would be good steps. And then beyond that, use a two mode of action fungicide rather than a single mode of action fungicide. That'll give you the best protection going forward against building disease resistance. Well, protecting your crop from disease is very important, but protecting your fields from weeds is also critical. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? I wish I could apply all the PK and micronutrients this crop needs at planting. You can. When your soils are not excessively nutrient deficient, you can apply a whole season of PK and micronutrients when you plant and get top yields at harvest. AgroLiquid's exceptional nutrient compatibility and superior efficiency allows you to prescription apply everything your crop needs safely and conveniently. Research proves it. For more info, go to agroliquid.com. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling, makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. The math for getting higher yield potentials is simple. Four is greater than two. Steiger Rotrack Series tractors give you proven Case IH Quattrek technology, helping you cover more acres in less time. And with four independent oscillating tracks, you'll also minimize ground pressure and compaction for a better growing environment, all of which adds up to higher potential yields. The world of farming is changing. Be ready with Case IH. Some prefer to invest in fields halfway around the world in short-term solutions to long-term challenges. At Poet, we're investing in the fields we have right here at home, cultivating communities and growing the local economy creating new local jobs while we create worldwide energy solutions, helping family farms grow even as they fuel the world. Because we know that investing in a community can pay global dividends. See the world differently with POET. If you could see how nitrogen loss causes yield loss, you'd fix it. 
so fix it right. With the stabilizer proven to reduce all three ways nitrogen escapes. Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager. It keeps nitrogen in a more readily available form longer. With today's market and environment, it's a high priority to keep your nitrogen on track. To higher yield with Nutrisphere N. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagee STS application system. Hagee STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagee rep today. The number one complaint I've heard from many farmers all over the country is, well, our crop prices are low, but the fertilizer price is still high, and I don't think I should even put any fertilizer out. Well, look, you don't know unless you get a good soil test. And you can't get a good soil test if you're just doing composite samples. We strongly encourage you either zone sample or grid sample and get complete soil test information. Then we can actually help you and we can figure out, hey, is this gonna be a good return on investment for whatever, potassium, for phosphorus, for nitrogen, for sulfur, for any of these things. We don't know about that ROI unless we look at the data, the information for your field. Well, Brian, the counter to that is, well, isn't grid soil Soil sampling complicated? Isn't it expensive? The answer to all that is no, and this may sound a little bit self-serving, but we did come out with an app called the Ag PhD Soil Test app. Very simple to use to be able to set up your own grid points and go out to the field. And just to show you how simple it is, I took two of my sons out in the field and we grid soil sampled and the kids did everything other than drive the pickup through the field. I guess they left that part to me. But from pulling the samples, very simple. A soil probe is so easy to operate. You just have to push in the ground six inches, dump it in a bucket, mix those samples up, and send them in. Yes, you want to pull cores. You want to pull six to eight cores at each grid point. And with this app and your phone, it'll direct you to that grid point. So you find the point, and then right around that, you pull your six or eight cores, blend those together, then go to your next grid point. The big thing that a lot of people will say, though, is, well, I've never done my own soil sampling before, and I have somebody else do that. Okay, look, this is so simple and easy. It's a job that you or your, your kid, uh, grandkid maybe, can do and make lots of money off it. The, a typical person who's going to go out and do soil sampling charges a dollar or two dollars an acre for the labor. All right, well, you can sample a thousand acres in a day. Okay, so if you want a job that pays a thousand to two thousand dollars a day, then go soil sample. It's real easy. So you can do your whole farm in a very short amount of time, and it's simple. It's nice now, too, because you're in control. You know the samples are pulled right. You know exactly the spots they were pulled. You just have more information. And what it's going to do, too, is it's going to force you to learn a little bit more about your fields, and that's a good thing. So it's only taking maybe a day or two, depending on how big your farm is, obviously being out in the fields. You can do this in the fall, you can do it in the spring. If you wanted to, you could do it in the summertime, but it's obviously a lot easier when there's no crop out there. But get the soil samples done, and then these soil samples go in and you get a complete soil test back. That's the important thing. One thing that generally gives a good payback is controlling our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Wood sorrel. All right, this is a weed that I misidentified myself in my younger days. I would see it out in the lawn. That's where I would normally see yellow wood sorrel, sometimes in overgrazed pastures too. But in the lawn, it has a three-leaf leaflet. 
much like clover does. And I thought, okay, it's a little different kind of clover. It's not right. white clover like I normally see in the yard. It's something different. It puts on a yellow five-petaled flower. And I thought, okay, well, it's, I'll call it yellow clover. That's what I thought it was. That was some kind of sweet clover or something. But no, it's different. This is a perennial weed. Typically, it's got a shallow taproot on it. The other thing that I thought about too in lawns is when I mowed the lawn short, that's where I ended up with problems. If I let the lawn get a little taller and left it a little taller, so I was mowing more often but not cutting as short, I did a pretty nice job shading that weed out. Okay, I want to come back to the identification. When Darren said it's got three little leaflets on each stem, what we're looking at here is these little leaflets, they're kind of heart-shaped. With Darren's story here, talking about leaving the lawn a little bit taller, it's important with anything. We always say crop canopy is the best weed killer there is. We don't want you to have to spray a herbicide. Use the free method. Let the lawn get a little taller, let it choke it out. But let's also think about if I'm in a lawn or in a pasture, how do I get a thick, rich, healthy lawn? You gotta have good fertility, you wanna have good drainage, you wanna do everything else right as well. A well, fertility piece is really key. And when it comes to any grass production, this is where I see guys falling off. When we think about soil sampling, like we were talking about earlier, Sample your yard and sample your pasture. The best guys with large acres of pastures, they're pulling soil samples. Now they're not generally grid soil sampling every one acre or anything like that, but they're at least getting an idea in a few spots out in the pasture. Hey, what am I missing out here? Uh, what, what should I be putting more on? I talked to one livestock producer in the upper Midwest who was just drastically short in copper. He had no idea he was short in copper. He said, this is crazy. You know, I don't understand why I'm so short in copper, but he noticed the ration that he was feeding his cattle in addition to grass it was really low in copper and so he wasn't putting any copper back out there and he figured out that man just putting on micronutrients increases growth tremendously and also help the cattle out so you know having good fertility in your pasture ground is going to help the health of your herd so it's not just about weed control and healthy grass out there it's about livestock health too i'll give you a couple of quick tips for lawns what i would suggest is using some ammonium sulfate that gets you some nitrogen and some sulfur and the nitrogen is in a more stable form than just the nitrate form. And then in addition to that, maybe try a little bit of gypsum too. If your lawn's especially hard, that does help soften your ground up a little bit. Okay, so we're getting into a lot of things here. Let's focus again on killing yellow wood sorrel. If you got it in your yard or pasture, what do you do? Yep, okay, so prowl, treff land, sauna land, they're all great products if you have them in soybeans. And actually, prowl and treff land, there are products like Preen, for example, or pendimethalin that are, are labeled for lawns. So you certainly can use those products. That's what we would suggest. The ALS products work very well as well. So things like Escort, Metsulfuron, Sulfol Sulfuron, the active ingredients. We use those in crops. Not a lot of times are those herbicides labeled for use in lawns or pastures necessarily. But all we're trying to say is ALS products are good. Uh, and certainly the, uh, the yellows are good. Otherwise, Dicamba out in a pasture would be excellent. Banvel 240D is not the best. I would go to Dicamba if it was me and use a good strong rate. Well, in a lawn, I use multiple applications of amine. That seems to be the safest of the lawn products. You can find some lawn products rate, that though. have some dicamba in them. I'm not real big on using them in a backpack sprayer where I'm going to be right there spraying it. But Amy does an okay job. If you do it early in the spring and late in the fall, is typically the best time to get yep, it. Yep, use the highest labeled rate of amine, spring and fall. That'll usually take care of your problem. Also in pastures, we should mention Tordon would be a good choice. Chaparral is not too bad either. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Yellow Wood Sorrel, but stay tuned. Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you, and only you, to the information you need most from your equipment, from anywhere, at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Upgrading on equipment, some pieces of machinery make you money and are worth the investment. Other pieces of new equipment can save you significant time in the field or with repairs. We'll discuss something that could do both on today's Iron Talk. When it comes to a good pull type mower conditioner, if you're cutting off alpha hay or pasture grass or something else, this is a piece of machinery that is critically important in your operation. Almost anywhere I travel, I meet a farmer complaining about it raining only when he has hay lying on the ground. More commonly though, I see the problem of farmers not getting the hay cut timely. The difference in relative feed value for livestock and simply the quality of hay all starts with getting it cut timely. If you're broken down, you just can't get the job done. With the new mower conditioners, many of the upgraded features focus on reducing downtime in the field. 
For example, look at the shock hub on Case IH's machine. It protects the cutter bar when you find an obstruction like a rock or an animal mound in the field. Rather than the gearbox getting obliterated, the shock hub takes the blow. It's a fairly easy 10 minute fix. You no longer need tools to adjust the swath boards and windrow shields. The cut quality and crimping are better and more consistent than ever and the flow of hay moving through the machine from the cut to the windrow is smoother and more even. Whether your machine is new or old, you still need to take the time to make some adjustments to the machine. Make sure your cutting tools are sharp for an even cut and less streaking. Set your angle and flotation right for good quality as well. Set the pressure and gap of the conditioning rolls to make creases in the stems for drying but not tearing them up and tearing leaves off. When properly maintained and operated, your pull type mower conditioner can provide your operation a great return on your investment. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Cornhead from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. This year's projected U.S. soybean yield will lose over half a billion dollars per point in shrink. Eliminate shrink in your bin. Store grain without lowering moisture content with the AgriDrive Bullseye Temperature and Moisture Controller. The Bullseye monitors air temperature and relative humidity, allowing your fans to utilize the weather's natural condition to maintain your grain at market moisture. Fan run times drastically decrease along with the cost of over drying. Eliminate shrink today. Call now. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots from Monsanto BioEgg is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more, and is applied to the seed so the live microorganisms go right to work enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Get Quick Roots today. Your time is valuable. That's why you need a Hagi STS application system. Hagi STS products are designed for precision and efficiency, allowing you to make applications all season long with just one machine. Contact your Hagi rep today. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields in your farm, call Norwood Sales today. Well, that's our time for today. But if you're looking for more agronomic information, we hope you tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM Channel 80. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show where we'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Plants actually tell farmers what nutrients they need. They don't do it verbally, but farmers get the information through plant tissue analysis. It's another way farmers practice responsible nutrient management. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.